Hello friends, good evening. Let's welcome to Astra series. This is Dhanunjay Reddy coming with the daily Hindu analysis for prelims. Uh, exclusive prelims, I will also deal with uh, the Hindu which are there for our mains in this uh, today's newspaper. So this is today's Astra. Today it is 4th of January, you all know this. 4th of January is today and we are going to discuss today's newspaper of the Hindu. So what are the main things that we have? First thing first, let me give you a brief idea about what are the things that we have in today's Astra. Some news coming from Israel, some news coming from United Nations organization, Iran is in news, Tunisia is in news and most importantly from Indian polity perspective, there is some uh, decision again which is made in the 4 is to 1 ratio regarding the freedom of speech to the MPs and MLAs uh, whenever they are speaking uh, to the media whenever they are communicating in the parliament or state legislative assemblies respectively. So this is the thing that we have in today's newspaper along with one news on biodiversity hotspot from Kerala. So these are the things that we are going to discuss in today's Hindu newspaper which are very important for UPSC as such. So this is Dhanunjay Reddy welcoming you. Let's start discussing this with the first component in the first page. No need for extra cups on the freedom of speech of ministers, says Supreme Court. Now, this is something which is again uh, going in line with freedom of speech for the ministers in order to uphold democracy. As per this uh, judgment, again, this is a five-judge constitu five judge constitutional bench. In this four judges have given one uh, were on one stand, and again, Ms. Nagaratna is on the other side of the story. Right now, what is this judgment all about? Now this judgment is all about whether a minister, whoever is speaking or addressing to a media, whenever he is addressing to the parliament, whether he is speaking the government stone or whether he is speaking that statements particularly only from his conscience. So freedom of speech as far as ministers is considered, whether that is uh, government's voice or whether that is his own voice, that is what he is in news. Now uh, this judge Nagaratnamma has said. Nagaratna has said that whenever they speak, they speak collectively and the collective voice of the Council of Ministers. But these, the other four judges, they say that they are, they do not represent the voice of Council of Ministers, but that is an individual voice. So this is what the judgment is. But first of all, let's try to understand what is this freedom of speech, why it is important for ministers, and what is this collective responsibility. So dealing with that aspects, let's first discuss that. In any democracy, parliament is the supreme authority because it is the body where the representatives of the people are present. We all know that. And when they reach the parliament, they have to have freedom of speech. Recognizing this, the Constitution of India under Article 105 of Indian Constitution gives powers, privileges, etc. to the House of Parliament and the members and committees thereof. As per this, subject to the provisions of this Constitution and the rulings and standing orders, orders regulating the procedures of parliament, freedom of speech should be there in the parliament. That is what they have said. No member of parliament shall be liable to any proceedings in any court. This is members. No one can be liable for anything that they have said or that they have acted in the parliament for whatever the speeches that they are done. Right. Now what about these members speaking outside the parliament? So this is either houses of the parliament inside the parliament. What about they speak outside? Again, court is telling that they have to have this freedom of speech because you cannot curtail that because they are the representatives of the people and whatever they wanted to speak, they have to speak. This is in news. So this is members and the judgment is about ministers. And in the India, there is something called Article 74 and 75 of Indian Constitution which speaks about Council of Ministers headed by the Prime Minister Right, Article 164 speaks about Council of Ministers headed by the Chief Minister. Now, these Council of Ministers and Prime Minister together form the Executive Head. So they are the Executive Branch. In India, as per Article 75, there is something called collective responsibility of the Council of Ministers to the so-called Lok Sabha in particular and to the Parliament in general. Now, when Council of Ministers together, they are responsible. Whenever they speak, some say that it is the voice of the government. Some say that this is not voice of the government. Because it has to be very clear that there are two types of uh, privileges, collective responsibility and individual responsibility. There are two types of responsibilities for every minister inside the house. 
one is collective responsibility the second one is individual responsibility so whenever they are speaking on singular lines whenever they are speaking out with their own consciousness regarding a certain policy then that is individual responsibility when they are speaking on behalf of the government that comes under council of ministers now this was in question before the supreme court and the supreme court clearly classified that these members they have freedom of speech individually that is should be given more importance the minister should be having more importance than don't consider that this is government's voice say for example if some minister has given some statement one should not consider this as a government statement but this is uh, the judgment which was said by four members but on the other side nagaratna has said the judge nagaratna has said that no this is not correct whenever a minister comes and speaks out of uh, by holding that post if he is speaking that reflects the so called the judgment of the government so this is what in news but what is important for us is articles 105 article 74 75 163 164, 164 of indian constitution please go through that that is more than enough now what is restricting the members from exercising their freedom of speech that also we have to see and then the restriction is whip a lash will be given right so what is this whip whip is something which is neither present in your constitution nor present in your parliamentary statute statute but it has developed as through a convention of parliamentary government so they have developed as a convention of pol- parliamentary form of government now here the ruling party or the opposition party can say to the political party members not to change the stand whenever some discussion is going not to change the stand whenever some decisions are going to be made so it regulates the whip regulates and monitors the behavior of the members of the parliament they are supposed to follow the directives of the whip whip will be from the party so it means the members should always follow the whip in general cases even if they have the second opinion they have to follow the party's opinion this is called curtailing the democracy because you should have freedom of speech for the members unless and until there is no freedom of speech for the members they cannot represent truly what they are intended for this is what the first topic is so the judgment keep in mind 74 75 163 164 Article 105 and 106 speaking about the privileges of the members of parliament. This is the thing, guys. Uh, so there is something about painted stock. What is painted stock? It is the stock, and it is painted because it has shock point. So pointed stock. But here, Indira Gandhi Geological Park is present where. it is present in visakhapatnam please note it it is present in visakhapatnam that is important let's move for the down jagri farmers eagerly waiting for the government's decision on fixing 5000 rupees as minimum support price for 100 kg of lum now why jagri should be there in msp because after covid 19 people started not using the sugar but the demand for jagri has increased enormously giving this context in order to reduce the prices are in order to give some relief to the consumers government of uh, andhra pradesh is thinking to buy it at minimum support price and then sell it from the behalf of government itself now in this context what is minimum support price that is very important minimum support prices is the rate at which government purchases crops from the farmers and is based on calculation of one half of the times of production of farmers so calculation of msp msp is equal to family labor plus actual cost into 1.5 times they will give msp now msp is the minimum support price for any crop that government considers as remunerative so this is for crops but it should be noted that jagri is not a crop right i'll discuss about this crops under msp so who decides this msp rate there are 22 crops and for sugarcane you have fair and remunerative price so if they ask for how many crops msp is there 22 for sugarcane it is one so separate sugar cane but msp is only for 22 in this 14 are for kharif crops six are for rabi crops and two for commercial crops now who recommends this commission on agricultural costs and prices recommends this and this is accepted by cabinet committee on economic affairs it has to be accepted by cabinet committee on economic affairs so these are the things that you have to remember under msp you have to also remember what are the 22 crops the 14 kharif crops the six rabi crops and the two uh commercial crops that are very important under msp that should be remembered from your perspective please don't forget to read it now coming to this jagri jagri is not a direct agricultural produce to officially fix the msp however keeping in view the demand of msp over the last few years 
the state government for the first time is considering the possibility of implementing. So this is under possibility of consideration, but so far MSP is totally up to the domain of central government that has to be understood. So if that becomes, if uh, Andhra Pradesh government fixes it, we have to look at what are the provisions that it is going to get it. So Khan clears the reintroduction of Cherian into the cabinet. Uh, this is some good news coming because the settlement between this uh, governor and cabinet has been settled because yesterday we discussed what are the powers that governor has, what are the powers this council of ministers or the cabinet has, right? Survey reaffirms rich biodiversity in Kerala's capital that is Tiruvananthapuram. Now what is important is what is biodiversity hotspots, how many biodiversity hotspots are there in India. Now it has to be noted that in India there are four biodiversity hotspots, namely the Himalayas, the Western Ghats and Sri Lanka, the Indo-Burma and the Sunda land. So if you look the Himalayas, the Western Ghats and Sri Lanka and then Indo-Burma land and then Sunda land. So these are the four biodiversity hotspots in India. Now the term biodiversity was coined by Norman Mayers in the year 1988. Conservation International that is known as a non-profit organization is associated with Mayo. So who is the organization who gives this biodiversity hotspots is Conservation International which is an NPO non-profit organization. Right. In order to qualify as a biodiversity hotspot what you should contain it has to meet some criteria and now what is that criteria. It should contain at least 50, 1500 species of vascular plants found nowhere else on the earth which means in that particular locality 1500 endemic plants should be present and it should have lost at least 70 percent of native uh, vegetation which means it should be under eco degradation right so 70 percent of land is under degradation 1500 vascular species this makes a particular hotspot particular region as hotspot so what are the four hotspots in india that is important who gives this hotspot that is important who coined hotspot that is important what are the qualifications to get this hotspot right now kerala is in news now they are speaking about this point of kerala right so western guards the western guards is indigenous you known as sahiyadris starts from tapti river in gujarat to the southernmost part of the country that is Kanyakumari. Now it is interrupted by Palkar Gap, Agastha Malai Hills, Nilgiri Hills, Anamalai Hills, Palani Hills, Maghamalai Hills, Maghamalai Hills, Cardamom Hills, Silent Valley uh, Hills are these present across this. Western Ghats is a world heritage sites. Please look at the world heritage sites. We have already discussed this. This is also important. So just remember this, this aspects are very important. Over three differential uh, this is about the Supreme Court judgment on uh, the so-called demonetization already we have discussed section 26 clause 2 of RPA what is it why it is important the second aspect that is important from this demonetization is whether what is the central board what is the functions of RBI these things we have already discussed this so this discussion is about whether that uh, uh, decision which is given by the Supreme Court is somewhat uh, correct or not that is what being discussed in this editorial but in order to be uh, an UPSC student you have to abide by the Supreme Court judgments nonetheless we have to also write that the judgment speaks only on the procedure in which this uh, de demonetization done was done was discussed but it doesn't really focus on the outcomes of this uh, demonetization that is what we have already discussed preventing animal cruelty is a duty of the state just remember that prevention of animal cruelty you have one act known as prevention of cruelty towards animals act that is 1960 just remember that apart from that you do not have much there. Slow and steady President Lula must negotiate Brazil's conservative policy cautiously. We all know that Brazil new uh, president was elected and he is Lula de Salva. So this might be a local exam question who is uh, Lula de Salva. So he is the president of Brazil. It is crucial for India to embrace the multi-domain operations. Now what is this multi-domain operations and how this is useful? This is GS paper 3 internal security component. Now why this multi-domain operations is important? The reason is today we are in a new form of uh, technology and technology has changed the face of the war. This is not the traditional warfare which we will go face to face on the land like Bahubali movie. But this is something which is happening uh, in the technological terms. 
uh, such as it may be a cyber warfare, that may be a warfare which is causing in the outer space or this may be a war which is also a traditional war which is happening between China and India and the China-India border. So, given this context, when we are in this stage of situation, we should have this multi-domain operations. Now, what is this multi-domain operations? Multi-domain operations is not just actions on land, in sea, air, cyberspace, space or in electromagnetic spectrum. This is not in one of this area. If it is one of this area, you call it as theater commands. That is land theater, sea theater, air theater, cyber theater. So today you do not require individual things. Individual things are important. At the same time, a merger of all these things is also important. Right? It compromises operations conducted across multiple domains, not individual domains. Mix every domain so that you will have some short team ready to attack or to face an attack immediately, which means you should have some persons from the land, some persons from the sea, some persons from the air, some persons from the cyberspace coordinated together and then forming a batch in order to be ready to face uh, the new emerging threats. That is called multi-domain operations. One domain, single domain is land theatres or sea theatres, multi-domain is different theatres coming together and working together. That is called multi-domain theatres. Right. So just remember this because UPSC has the tendency of asking these type of questions in uh, GS paper 3 UPSC mains, not for prelims, but for mains it is important. Now what should be our security, particularly from the so-called military security, it should be fourfold as per this article. So just remember the first one is we should have a pilot project. First term is traditional physical domains must be stabilized. What do this mean? The traditional physical domain, single domain should be stabilized, land, air, water, we should have enough strength in this. The second one is the C3 networks need to be hardened and protected against cyber threats. Now what is the C3 networks? C3 is command control and communication structure. In order to face communication infrastructure or in order to face cyber threats, you should have C3 commands. So one is physical space, the second one is cyber space protection. The third protection is we should have some pilot project on MDO environment, multi-domain operations. We should have some pilot projects. This is starting and the fourth thing is to get fundamentals of MDO right, it is vital to try and educate persons right now. So we should start, so three and four discussing about MDO, MDO environment in the long run has to be stabilized, but the fourth aspect is immediately we have to start training few as people. So this is the article which is speaking. So GS paper three internal security means perspective, it is important. What is MDO, what is, how we have to be prepared for the future wars. One is stabilize your physical systems, ensure that uh, the command structure is very strong for cyber physical systems, ensure your multi-domain operations are very, very strong and let's start training the people in this MDO. These are the four aspects that the author has been advocating and again, a very good examples and very good knowledge to write about and also. So these are the things. A late but a right call by Kerala governor. Now this is speaking about the conflict that has been existing between the Kerala governor and the Kerala cabinet. Now article 163 of the Indian constitution said that there should be council of ministers headed by the chief minister to aid and advise the governor and exercise his functions. Chief minister shall be appointed by the governor and other ministers shall be appointed by the governor upon the advice of uh, the chief minister. Now they hold the office under the pleasures of president. However, it has to be understood that the pleasures of governor here, they hold the office under the pleasures of governor. However, it has to be understood that this pleasure doctrine of governor is not absolute. It cannot stretch too far. That is what he is saying. Absolutely, that is what it has happened. Right. And this article speaks about what if the governor has not given uh, uh, the right for oath because every minister, when he is taking up the charge of minister, as per Article 164, they have to administer, the governor has to administer the oath and secrecy to the ministers before he assumes the office. This is very important. In order to become a minister, you have to take the oath and secrecy, oath of secrecy uh, and oath of office. The, both are different, oath of office and oath of secrecy, which were mentioned in second schedule of Indian, third schedule of Indian constitution. So both are important. But who has to administer this? This is governor. Now, Mr. Arif Mohammed has refused to give, uh, initially he refused to call for this oath of office for this person, for this MLA, but now he has called it, so the thing has been settled. So what Mr. Chandru says is, even if governor has not called, the minister should have written it, uh, uh, has signed on the oath, saying that I am taking oath, he should have printed that oath on a letter pad and he should have signed it and he should have sent it to the 
governor's office that is as equivalent as sending it uh, or governor making the vote right this is what it is saying so not that important but just remember these aspects what is this pleasure doctrine of governor what is article 164 already we have discussed about this in depth so this is something which is coming from punjab not important diabetics diabetes wealth and awareness it is always often described that uh, diabetes diabetics in india diabetes in india is a rich man's disease because as we grow rich lifestyle changes happen and this is also reflected with national health family survey saying that the share of persons with high random blood sugar is lowest among the poor persons that is 20 percent while richest so diabetes is highest in rich people in the country however it has to be understood that high awareness of diabetes has prevented a better chance of the disease so if you are having awareness irrespective of whether you are rich or poor there is little chance of getting this diabetes obviously if you are aware of everything if knowledge is wealth information is wealth once you have the knowledge you will be always saved from anything now pmcm have no disciplinary control over members of the council of ministers again this is what we are we have discussed in the first component Article 105 of Indian Constitution gives privileges to the ministers, gives privileges to the members of parliaments. Article, uh, a similar article in the Council of Ministers in the state also have this. So this is what we have already discussed. Please correct this. Uh, international summit, international scientific uh, community, international scientific community must work for this because Indian Science Congress is being held here. Now, yesterday I said Indian Science Congress is held in Delhi. Please note it. It is not Delhi. It is Nagpur, Maharashtra. So, 108th International Science Congress is held in Nagpur, Maharashtra. So, this is not Delhi. Please note it. Nagpur, Maharashtra is the center for 108th Indian Science Congress. Permanent members not in a hurry to see United Nations reforms, which is uh, said by our Foreign Affairs Minister, Jay Shankar. Now, what are these permanent members? Permanent members are five members, that is China, France, Russia, UK, US. These are the five permanent members and every year, two member, five members will be elected for the term of two years to be non-permanent members. Now, what is this permanent members? Permanent members have the right to veto any decision. Now, India is asking to become a permanent member, but these countries are complacent on it. So, what are these permanent countries? What are these? Uh, now, India is holding the position of non-permanent membership for two years that you have to understand so this is permanent membership and non-permanent membership of united nations organization uh, try to understand that after this iran upholds two executions over turns three iran is in news please note uh, this uh, context that is what are the borders of iran you should understand that iran is sharing it with persian gulf pakistan afghanistan Turkmenistan, caspian sea so iran is surrounded by caspian sea gulf of oman on the other side, it has Azerbaijan, Armenia, Turkmenistan, Iraq, Kuwait. So, Kuwait is not there, sorry. So, these are the things. Iran is surrounded by Iraq, Turkey, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Turkmenistan, Afghanistan, Pakistan with three seas, Gulf of Oman, Persian Gulf of Caspian Sea. This is important, guys. And going uh, much depth into Iran also, Iran has two mountain ranges that is known as Elbrus Mountains. And known as Jagros mountains. So Jagros and Elbrus are the mountains present in Iran. So this might be a question along with this. Right, there is one river called Karun River, K R even flowing through this. Uh, Lake Urmia is also present here. They might ask these type of questions. Please have a look at this. Dasti Kavair is a city in which place? Iran. So please remember Bandar. Abbas is the port located in Iran. So these are the things which we have to remember in Iran. Again, Israel is in news because of some uh, occupation of Israelis or uh, Israeli visiting some parts of Palestinians, which has raised up some uh, challenges. So Israel is bordered by Egypt, Jordan, Syria, Lebanon. Gaza Strip is this, West Bank is this. Now, this is what Palestinian land is. Now, Israeli minister has went into this. That is the reason what it is in news so it has to be understood in the year 1967 this ceasefire agreement was done saying that whatever it is dotted this goes to the so-called palestinians the rest of the goes to jews whereas jerusalem is an international holy city where everyone can go 
India said to hike 17 billion cut in food and fertilizer subsidy. It has to be noted that subsidies form the highest component of our revenue uh, account deficit, revenue account expenditure, particularly after the interest payment. So if interest payments is the largest component, the second largest component of our current expenditure goes in food subsidies and fertilizer subsidies. Now India is going to cut it down in the next financial year as per some exports. So India is spending almost 40 trillion dollars, 40 trillion US dollars on fertilizers. Now India wants to reduce it almost 4 trillion dollars as per the exports. But you have to know what is this type of expenditure. This is revenue expenditure which is going to increase the fiscal deficit. Hence government of India wants to reduce the fiscal deficit by reducing it. Government raises windfall tax on crude oil. You have to know what is this windfall tax. Windfall tax is uh, on that money which is coming from the wind, right? Simple to understand that money that is coming from wind. What is this windfall? Windfall means out of expectations you are getting money at once, then that is going to be taxed, and that is called windfall tax. Right, windfall tax on crude oil export of diesel and aviation turbine fuel. So now what is this windfall tax? This is the tax on the oil companies who are exporting oil from India. So all those oil companies who are exploring in India and exporting outside the country. So they are taking the oil inside the Indian oil reserves and they are exporting because of the global oil prices are very high. Now these fellows will get huge amounts of profits as a result government of India is collecting extra tax and that tax is known as windfall tax. So windfall tax is associated with oil exports first thing. Second thing is it is one type of direct tax because it is collected as a form of corporate tax that you have to understand. Next one is uh, RBI likely sold to sell dollars to stop rupee falling. Now this is whenever there are less dollars and more rupees obviously rupee value is going to devaluate as a result dollars are going to be injected into the economy this injection of foreign currency into the economy or sucking of foreign currency into the from the economy these two actions of rbi are known as sterilization function of rbi this is previous your prelims question so look at sterilization sterilization means injecting dollars or sucking away dollars foreign currency from the market is known as sterilization function so this is the one on the legality of Israel's occupation. United Nations General Assembly recently has conducted a passing resolution that International Post of Justice should render its opinion on Israel occupying some lands of Palestine or attacking Palestinians. So ICJ, it is in ICJ and India has abstained from voting from here also while its rulings are binding. So ICJ rulings are binding but it doesn't have the right to enforce them. This is important guys, have a look at this, that is more than enough. Apart from that, you do not have much as far as uh, UPSC is concerned. Burj Khalifa is known to be the highest, world's tallest building. This is the thing that you have. So, in essence, what are the things? Sterilization function of RBI. What is this windfall tax? The third component that you have, uh, particularly, is Israel borders, Iran borders, right? And then you have to remember about something called what are these subsidies? Next one is what are the uh, cities or what are the mountains present inside Iran? United Nations Organization Security Council permanent members and then reforms as is being asked by India and then United Nations scientific community should fulfill its requirements. So this is Indian National Indian Science Congress held at Nagpur, Maharashtra. So this is about Council of Ministers and this is about uh, the role between the Governor and the President of India. So these are the things that is important for your prelims along with this hotspot. So I hope you have like with this please continue watching our videos this will be more than enough for your prelims continue this maintaining notes and that is going to be more than sufficient thanks for joining uh, we'll meet tomorrow with tomorrow's first talk